Hi, I'm Dona D'Agosti, president of Plaatsi. I would first thank you, the organizers, to allow us to uh, create this Symposium 13, Extending the Biodiversity Knowledge Graph. Today, I would like to talk to you about the ecosystem of linked biodiversity publications, tools and services created by CETAF, the Paris Museum, Pensof, Plaatsi, Sibyls and Synodum. Our motivation is that we see there's a biodiversity crisis, an unprecedented crisis, and we believe we have a lot of data that could be used to help to preserve biodiversity. We also see a scientific challenge, the challenge to know at minimum how many species and what we know about them. We want to democratize science by empowering citizens at any time, any place to have access to scientific knowledge. We want to influence policy by empowering decision makers through provision of the best possible scientific biodiversity knowledge derived from scientific results. We want to integrate scientific results in, into the research life cycle and we want to integrate biodiversity results into the growth of AI. Traditionally, natural history museums communicated new research results via publications. This built up to libraries which have card indices as access points and more recently DOIs and full text searches if possible if published accordingly. Today we continue to communicate new research results, but we publish them as an integral part of a research life cycle. We publish them as fair data objects, a source for AI applications. This is a transition from an article to open FAIR digital data and FAIR statements integrated into the scientific knowledge sphere. The immediate use and reuse in the research data lifecycle, the focus on data and annotations. I don't need to talk too much about the bicycle project anymore. It is about access and links to biodiversity data. It has a special focus on literature. Here I would reiterate that the goal for literature is to create tools, improve extraction, to create digital accessible knowledge, to create an infrastructure for long-term preservation, the biodiversity literature repository or tape libraries, services to reuse and explore data, <coughs> each serving a specific community and needs, each which is access to what's known about the sequence, specimen, taxon concepts, and the provenance of data. So you can always go back and understand from where is the data coming from. Complement the research data lifecycle with adequate state-of-the-art publishing tools. Create the biodiversity knowledge hub as the place to find and learn about these new opportunities and learning tools. So what is scientific knowledge in this context? Foremost, it's digital accessible knowledge. In taxonomy, this can be defined as open fair taxonomic data in machine and human readable format originating from scientific publication. Taxonomic treatments, including provenance, a reference taxonomic name, links to fair figures, tables, cited treatments, material citations, bibliographic references. Annotated links to cited, data, digital specimens, sequences, observations, and accessible through a long-term repository or repositories. This digital accessible knowledge lends itself very much for reuse. In this graphic, you see the various domains in, in, in green uh, biodiversity, the genomics community, uh, red, the citizen sciences and in, in, in yellow, the public at large. Then there are data objects, of which, of which I will not go into more details, and publications. These publications come into the treatment bank factory. They are then 
submitted and uh, published in the biodiversity literature, literature repository where they become fair data objects. From there, there are many reusers now. I will introduce a few of them now. So, so first, the from Treatment Bank, the, the article treatments and figures will be deposited in Zenodo. Zenodo is a robust long-term repository. It has publications will be extended with metadata. Treatments are made fair and figures as well. They are enriched with domain-specific custom metadata. And long-term storage for annotations is developed together with data futures. Checklist Bank is interested in checklists and taxonomic names, uh, taxonomic treatments, material citations, and figures. Sibyls is interested in publications and treatments. They are specialized in annotations, for example, for biotic interactions. The AI applications to ask uh, questions and use unstructured text, but also linked open data. And they're combining PMC with biodiversity publications. That does bridge in the gap between the life sciences and biodiversity. ENA is interested in bidirectional links between sequences and material citations, treatments, and taxonomic concepts. GBIF is interested in data sets, treatments to accompany species, and material citations as in the old um, data model occurrences. They are imported as Starring Core archives as treatment data sets. Open Biodive is interested in publications, treatments, taxonomic names, and material citations. They are sourced from XML publication, XML treatments. And Open Biodive opens, uh, offers a linked open data search portal, so they can use linked open data and create knowledge graphs. Sinospecies is interested in treatments and taxonomic names. They're also a linked open data application and the speciality is to create timelines of taxonomic acts via linking of treatment citations. They also use figures to, to link to, as well as, as material citations. The data conversion service established in and further developed in Bicycle is in fact not just a, a conversion service, but it's part of the research data lifecycle. Publications come in, they're converted, they're made fair, they're reused by GBIF on the lower right. GBIF data is reused by scientists, which create new publications, which in fact, at some point, go back and being processed again through the, our workflow. And thus, the, the research data lifecycle is closed. Further services are the advanced publishing workflows for prospective publishing, which is important, hopefully picks up very much because it speeds up, makes the data liberated from publications much more precise. We will learn more about the ARFA writing tool by Painsoft and Metastem by the Paris Museum in, in, in a follow-up uh, presentation. Similarly, the training courses will be explained later, which are used to teach you how to convert, annotate, analyze, and reuse literature-based and combined data. The infrastructures are now all housed on large-scale research infrastructures, say Nodo at CERN or Sibyls at the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics. The publishers are professional publishers, Painsoft or the Paris Museum, this provide, provides increasingly a stable service and, and repositories. And there's a 
big advance from projects to really uh, creating infrastructures now. And there is a production, an ongoing production. So right now there are about 84,000 publications processed, which results in 850,000 treatments and about 1.5 million material citations, which are reused, as you can see, by the um, other infrastructures. So to conclude, please go and talk to Lubo, Guido, Patrick, Joanna, Tim, Marcus, Olaf, how they use the data or how you can use the data. We want to scale up. We want to really make open up this huge stack of an estimated 500 million pages of scientific public, uh, biodiversity literature. So we have a robust infrastructure and workflows, but we need to review it and improve them. We want to build this workflow into Libroscope to process unstructured biodiversity literature into digital accessible knowledge. We want to spark the interest engagement by you to become involved in semantic publishing annotations. And finally, a discussion, a continuous discussion will be held at the Buchholz Declaration Plus 10 meeting in Decentis in August 2024. I thank you for your attention.